Hi, welcome back to the shop. Uh, today I wanted to talk about um, uh, Stanley number 50 little plow planes that they made. Uh, they're fairly useful and I think that they, they actually have a nice proportion for your hand and uh, movement. It gives you a good weight, although it does tend to me, unlike the 45s, to flip a little bit. You wind up with more pressure up here. And it, of course it can, comes with a bunch of different cutters. But that's not really what I want to talk about today. I was talking to a friend about um, kerfing planes and uh, about uh, stair builder saws. And uh, for those of you who don't know, a kerfing plane is a, is a plane that's been modified to take a, a, a saw or it's been designed to hold a saw blade uh, with a fence and give you a kerf that you can follow with the grain. You can do it against the grain, but it's more often times for ripping a board. And what it does is it creates a kerf that you can follow when you're resawing. Because if you take a long board <coughs> like this, for instance, and you want to saw it down either this way into two planks or this way into strips, then as you go down your saw, it's easy for it to move. And so it's kind of hard. The way I was taught when I was young to do it was you would run your saw in this way and then you would follow your line and, um, and then creep down a little bit and, and go this way a little bit so that you have more of a line to extend. So you're using the groove that you cut to make your blade uh, follow the line that you want it to. And it can be difficult. Um, uh, particularly for a novice uh, sawyer, but um, uh, experienced ones can kind of get the hang of it and they can do it fairly well. So uh, I, was, uh, I was following this thing on Facebook about these kerfing saws and I never had a kerfing saw. I was taught that way to follow the lead of my own saw. Um, the problem is oftentimes American saws cut on the push where Japanese saws cut on the pull and um, uh, the problem oftentimes with the American saws is that as you're pushing, if it's not a really good stiff blade with a back saw like type device on the top of it to keep it rigid, it, it can overheat and it can start to warp on you and then that also hurts you following a line. So that all being said, uh, I was following this uh, thread on, the, on Facebook about it and uh, Bob Page who owns Lake Loon Tool Works. I get those confused and say Loon Lake, but it's Lake Loon Tool, Tool Works he, up in northern Michigan. He's a, a, a real expert on saws, and, uh, and his company that he has um, will resharpen saws and um, I believe maybe uh, uh, refurbish saws and then sell them. Uh, a very good resource. But he mentioned that he had taken a Stanley plow plane, number 50, and he had modified it to hold a saw blade and to act as a kerfing saw. Well, I was astounded and very impressed with the concept, but didn't know really how he did it. So um, I wrote to him and I asked him about it and um, he very kindly agreed to uh, make me one. So uh, I was in the middle of a bunch of other projects today, but this box arrived um, and I had been waiting for it. I sent Bob this old 50 that I have. And you see that I had more than one. This is a newer one. The earlier ones uh, didn't have the wooden handles. And, uh, so I had this one and I discovered later that it had some issues. Down in here, apparently this fence had broken and somebody had re-welded it but didn't do a very good job. I mean, it's correct, but it's ugly. Um, so it's not of a great value to any collector and it had quite a bit of rust and gunk and stuff in it and uh, I'm not really sure where I got it. Somebody might have given it to me years ago and I thought if I supplied him with a plane, would he make me the kerfing attachment for it? And he generously uh, agreed to. So I packaged up my uh, plane with all the parts, uh, some that I didn't even need, and I sent it to him. And 
This arrived this afternoon in the mail, and I was very happy to see it. So I'm going to put this one away uh, back on the shelf and use it as a plow plane with the different cutters that it comes with. And, um, and I actually think this is more comfortable with the larger wooden handle. If you're going to use a small molding plane or combination plane, I think this is a really good one. Um, and you can see this one's japanned, this one's coated. At any rate, so I sent this off to him, and knowing that it had some issues, and it came back with an addition that he put on, and I'll do some close-up pictures to make it easier for you. But this brass plate, heavy brass plate, and a saw blade in here, and, um, it's a fairly coarse saw blade. Um, I think, I didn't put a rule on it, but I can. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight inch. Now, I tried it out on pine. I tried it out. So I already did this side here. And you can see what a beautiful, nice straight cut that is. So um, I'm going to do it on this side here because I recorded the video over there. It had some background music that was an issue. This was very aggressive sawing. It's a, you can see the teeth. Finding it's like a plow plane that I need to start forward rather than back here because as it cuts it'll fill the uh, kerf. So a very light cut and um, and an open end to throw out that uh, the shavings and then working my way back along this board. You see how it it'll clog up. Now this is pine, so. Pine, you know, it's more gummy and gooey, so so it'll clog easier. But um, so what I did when I got those clogs is all I did was I started the the blade back on top of them, and it cleared them right away. Now I haven't got my depth stop really set, but each time I go back a little, you see now there's a little clog. So all I do is come forward a little bit on it, and it goes right away. But now you can see, in that short time, I've been able to get a nice start for uh, uh, a good ripping of this board using this kerfing plane. And that will allow me to follow that line and rip these pieces off really easily. This is really just a starter. I'm not trying to uh, saw all the way through the board, and I've probably got it deeper than I need to. I could probably set the depth stop and uh, do less than that. but. Isn't that beautiful? I it out on some uh, maple and some cherry, and I just brought out this piece of oak flooring that I had, and um, I thought I would try it on that just to show you. The fence keeps it really nicely following the edge of the board. It takes no force with such a coarse uh, tooth um, to 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 get it to cut. Basically, you're sliding and uh, and allowing it to do the cutting. And if you if you apply any pressure, um, then what happens is it wants to bite in a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm starting in the forward edge and I'm getting it in, and then moving back and slicing off this raised area that still isn't all the way in. But um, this is some very hard white oak, and um, it's making easy work of it. And it's creating a beautiful kerf parallel to the edge. See right here. So I owe a great deal of thanks to Bob for doing this because... Um, I, I, I wouldn't have even known.
known how to do it. Um, it takes a real uh, technological mind and uh, and mechanical uh, person, and uh, so I thought I'd show it off today in the video. Thanks for watching.